So thank you for joining me this afternoon on this last day of June 30th, 2020. As a reminder, tomorrow is a very important day in the 4-H world as it is the animal identification deadline. So you wanna make sure that all of your animals are properly um, enrolled in the 4-H online system as well as all of your DNA submitted to your local extension office. Uh, there might be some differences depending on your county, so make sure you, you check that out, but definitely make sure everything is in there by tomorrow so that you are eligible to proceed forward. My name is Courtney Searwalt, and I am the 4-H Animal Science Extension Specialist here in Indiana. And today I'm also joined by Kara Harbison, who is our 4-H online specialist. So Kara has graciously given us some of her time this afternoon. Um, she's obviously very busy, but um, is going to be helping me manage the chat room as well as make sure people uh, have what they need because today I'm actually going to present the topic, uh, one that's near and dear to my heart, which is beef showmanship. So um, for those that may be just joining us for this presentation, we've been doing virtual presentations with the exception of last week since the end, roughly the end of March. So we've had about, I think we're close to 12 sessions now that you can view on um, the Indiana 4-H YouTube channel, as well as find them located on our website under uh, our resource list. So be sure to check out all of those sessions um, and buff up your knowledge while we're living in a little bit of different times. Enough of the business, let's get started here. So just to tell you a little bit about me and how I came to, um, I guess, be, be the speaker today on beef showmanship, I grew up on a small cow-calf operation in basically South Central Indiana. Uh, my family primarily raised Maine Anjou and Simmental cattle, and through that I got to be a 10-year 4-H member in Morgan County where I was very active in several 4-H projects. Um, I love 4-H, which kind of is what led me to, to this, this position that I'm in now. Um, throughout my youth experience, I was also the president and a member of the Indiana Junior Beef Cattle Association. So uh, you might recognize those folks if you show at the State Fair or the Beef Congress. They're the youth that helped to put on both showmanship events um, I also was on the National Junior Maine Anjou Board and got the opportunity to show at several junior national cattle shows um, throughout the United States. Um, so that was pretty cool. And I was also the National Maine Anjou Queen, which is kind of a, I guess, a fun fact, but really enjoyed um, kind of growing up in the Maine Anjou breed. And after that, I went to Purdue, where I majored in... Um, Ag communications as well as minored in animal science and I work started a job with extension and now uh, serve as the 4-H animal science specialist so I consider all of this kind of a background that was full of opportunities that um, kind of provided uh, me the the gateway to be who I am today so again very um, very uh, impactful that I had the opportunity to grow up showing beef cattle. My husband, which is the guy there in the backwards hat, a couple years ago we were doing an old timer showmanship at our um, home county of Morgan County. So he and I actually grew up competing against each other in that very show ring. And uh, he, he and I both uh, still raise some cattle and hopefully someday we'll have kids of our own back in the ring doing just the very same thing. So. All right, so what is showmanship? We hear the term a lot, and when we think about it, when we're talking about theater or dance, it truly is the art of someone presenting uh, whatever their talent may be. So when we talk about art and dance, it's the, it's the theater, it's the play, it's the drama behind it. When we're talking about animals, we're talking about the ability of that person to present their animal. And obviously, when you're doing that, you want to do it to your ultimate best ability that you can. This is not the part of the show where the judge is evaluating the composition or the makeup of your animal. So that's not the time when they're going to be giving you reasons or explanations of improvement on the physicals of that animal. 
but more or less they're evaluating how you're handling that animal. So this is a separate event in the class or show. However, anytime you have the opportunity, sometimes showmanship's at the beginning of the day, sometimes it's at the end of the day, but you always want to make sure that you're giving it your all and operating to your best of your ability. Hey, Courtney, share your screen. Did it kick off? Must have. Did you see it at all? <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't up. Why, why you've been talking? Okay, well, I'll flip through that again. No problem. All right. Let's see now. Can you see it? Yes. All right. So let me make sure you can still see it. Can you still see it? Yes. Okay. So there's my pictures real quick. And then this is where we're at. Um, and again, this will be recorded. Apologize for the issue. I had no idea. Feel free to cut me off, Kara. Sometimes <laughs> stop me whenever you need to. Um, so yeah, we were talking about it's a separate event. It's not when they're evaluating the actual animal. But lastly, showmanship is a team effort. So you and whatever animal you're showing, you work as a team. So it's important that as you work as a team, um, you know, you get to know each other just as you would uh, a friend or something like that. Your animal is truly your friend. They're your teammate and they're not going to work unless you do. So um, keep that in mind as you're preparing uh, anytime. All right. So lastly, I can't tell you how many times I've had this ingrained in my brain as a child and even as a young adult with anything you do, whether it's your attitude, your work, or showmanship in this instance, it starts at home. So how do you prepare? And right now I'd like you to take, Carrie's gonna help me out with this, but take a chance or take the opportunity to type in the chat box some things that you do to prepare for showmanship at home. So if you go um, kind of in the, take your mouse in the middle of the panel there, uh, there should be a, a chat box right there. It looks like a question or a question bubble. Um, type in some things and Kara, if you'll help me, by sharing some of the, the thoughts there, that would be great because I don't think I can see those at the moment. Yep, I can do that. Are people typing away? Must be, I'm not seeing anything yet. Okay. There's no wrong answer. So what are you doing? Oh, I see one coming in. What do you do at home? We know everybody has rituals and things that they practice, so. What do we got, Kara? What do we have? I'm not seeing anything yet. Oh, maybe they're sending them to me. They maybe send them to you. Okay. <coughs> Let's see. There we go. Can you see them now? Yeah, I see one, build a bond when they are young. Yep. All right. I'm gonna try to see if I can see these. For some reason it won't let me do it, but I'm gonna, I'm guessing several of you are gonna, is there another one? I see one. Um, we, since we have cows, we halt or break them. I'm going to assume when they're younger, when they're at home, they walk their animals every day, work on setting them up from a young age, walk them in new environments for about 15 minutes a day. Okay. Learn from an older member. Awesome. I see some grooming, practice, practice as if um, you're in the show ring, keeping your eye on the judge practicing to present the animal in the best manner. So yeah, so practicing is, is a huge thing. I'm glad to see that everyone is thinking about that. Kara, can you still see my screen? Yep. All right, so um, we'll, we'll check back on the chat box here in a few, but here are some things growing up. Um, you know, for us, my brother and I showed, again, from a pretty young age till um, we couldn't show anymore. So our summers went a lot 
went a lot and even our school year, I should say more than that. But um, we did a lot of these things on a daily basis. Uh, so daily care included feeding, washing and blowing the animal dry, uh, depending on the, the season of the year. But we did show uh, primarily year round. So we were pretty active, um, actively working their hair throughout the year. Spending time with your animals. So that was one of my favorite things. I really like animals and so obviously I'm in this role, but I um, really enjoy bonding with my animals and getting to know them and their personalities. Um, that's pretty fun. Uh, one of my favorite things to do was always just kind of go in the pen and hang out with them, play some music, practice just combing them as I got them, even just tying them up, um, you know, a couple times a day as, as I would do that, I would take my show stick and kind of start practicing that routine as well, just to, to get them used to you. Because um, again, it is an adjustment. They, they've got to spend some time getting to know you. Another big part of what we did and what we do now is just practice again, showing in the yard or the driveway. So our neighbors always enjoyed having a front row seat to our nightly showmanship practice. And we would just take the calves out when it was cool enough. So pretty much when the sun was, was down, uh, but yet still daylight, of course, to be safe. So we would take them out in the yard and just practice. Um, we spent a lot of time not only setting the animals up, but also being the judge and watching and learning about my animal by having, uh, you know, mom or, or dad or my brother or whoever take the animal and set it up so that I could see how my animal looked at different angles. That's a huge part of getting to know your animal is getting to physically view them and know what their strengths and their weaknesses are. Um, another part too that I think is important and I've made this mistake. So we would always show feeder calves is what we call them in Morgan County, but pretty much prospect cattle. And so we would, we would take them to the fair and oftentimes that would be the first time they'd have a show halter on it. Don't do that. <laughs> you want to make sure you get those first time show halter jitters out because a show halter is a lot different than that rope halter. So have one in your barn. Um, it may not be the one that you, you know, keep in your show box because you might forget it. But if you have a couple of them, keep one in your barn and definitely practice a few times with that halter. Figure out if you need to, you know, wrap the chain under the chin or, you know, shorten the strap, whatever the case may be. Um, you want to make sure that you're comfortable leading with that halter as well. Um, there's been times where we've used a halter from a different season and put it on an animal and thought it would fit and lo and behold, there's just something different about the skull structure of that calf that didn't work. So we had to figure out a way to, to get a new one or make something work. So don't don't rush into that last minute decision. There's nothing worse than kind of finicking with a halter right there at the show arena when you're trying to, to go in and present your animal. Ask for feedback. So constructive criticism is okay. That's what's gonna make you a better showman, a better industry representative. You need to know what, what you're doing well and what you can improve upon. And it doesn't mean anyone's faulting you. Everyone wants you to do the best that you can. So anytime someone provides you with that information, take it as a learning opportunity. Uh, video, you know, we didn't have camera phones and we didn't grow up with a video camera or anything like that. So our, we weren't in this luxury of having technology right at our fingertips. So a lot of times uh, we may have had I think we had camera phones towards the end of my show career, but um, other than that, it was me visually thinking about what my animal needs to be um, set up. Like you guys have an advantage because again, you could take an iPhone, take a video and see, well, maybe mom and dad are trying to explain to you, this is what you're doing wrong. You're pulling the head towards you as you're setting the back legs, but you're adamant or you think, no, I'm not doing that. And then you see the video and you're like, oh, okay, I'm more aware of that. How can I correct that? So study your animal. Questions, that's always a big, um, a big area in which youth have many questions themselves. You know, questions in showmanship are, as a, as a person who judges showmanship myself, it's per preference of the judge. Usually in my first rounds of showmanship, when I'm sorting showmanship, I'm not gonna ask questions. I wanna see, 
the interaction between that young person and their animal and see who kind of is checking that general criteria. Let's say we have another round, that may be where I ask the questions or definitely in the final round. And it's more or less, I wanna see how much they're absorbing from the project or learning about the project, but I also just wanna see how they can carry on a conversation. Um, because again, the point of this project is not just to go out there and show and to receive an award, it's truly about all of the thing, the components of learning about that animal. So that's why they ask questions. And it's okay if you don't know all the answers. You'll never forget the questions that you don't know the answer to. I remember the first one when I was probably a first year 4-H member. I don't know why, but the judge asked me what percent protein, um, which is, I mean, I say this because it seems like a pretty hefty question for a first year 4-H member, but what percent protein um, was I feeding my animal? And I said 36%, um, which is incredibly high. So um, I'll never forget responding with that answer. So it's okay to even say, I'm not sure, but I will know next time or something like that. All right, let's see. Wonder why my screen is frozen. All right. So we're going to kind of work a little bit backwards on this. I'm going to give you the, the baseline of common questions and then we're going to go through the steps of the process and then finally conclude with a video kind of putting everything together. I will admit my technology was not cooperating. I have some awesome videos that I hope to share with you at a later date but they weren't in the right format, so I have to work on that. But fortunately, the one where it puts everything together by chance was in the right format. So we'll conclude with that. Um, side note here, you'll see me there with a cool cat vest and my boots tucked in, my jeans, and some very dangly earrings. I was not in 4-H yet, and yes, I also showed dairy. So um, I actually am holding the, the calf wrong in this picture. I should be holding it underhanded, but um, we'll talk a little bit more about that in a few minutes. So what to wear. I always like to say, keep it classic. You wanna make sure that whatever you have on, whether it be this cat vest or a you know, uh, nice shirt, you wanna make sure that you're not distracting from your animal. It probably was in this instance, but <laughs> I also probably dressed myself, I'm guessing. Uh, what I prefer is a collared shirt um, when I showed beef cattle, definitely in showmanship, I always wore a long sleeve shirt. And you might ask, even when it was 100 degrees, yes, but that's just what I did. It doesn't mean you have to. That is kind of my, that was my style. That was my look. That was kind of the, um, you'll, you'll figure out you're going to develop kind of rituals. And that was my ritual. So I would wear even, even when it was 100 degrees, I'd have a long sleeve shirt on. Um, there were some times where I didn't. It definitely, if it wasn't showmanship, I may not, but I also just liked the way that it made my calf look. I felt like with the long sleeves, um, I was able to kind of give cattle some extension, so um, that was my preference, and I, again, something I developed. Make sure it's not wrinkled. Don't pull it out of a ball, the bottom of your closet and put it on because it's probably going to be a little bit wrinkled. Um, I know in the summertime, we're often tempted to potentially wear sleeveless and that might even have a collar, but I will caution you to have something with the sleeve because when it's hot and, you know, you give your, your calf uh, five gallons of water before they enter the ring, we know they're going to be slobbering and salivating and you're going to get that all over your arm and sometimes your hand. So it's kind of nice to be able to have something to wipe on. Um, and that's probably honestly another reason I would wear long sleeves is just because it kind of helped absorb some of that so that it wasn't completely leaking on my hand, which would then be more of an issue of just being able to control, control that halter. Jeans, I would recommend just something nice and clean. Um, my husband judges a lot, so I have been with him to a few shows um, within the last year, not anything recent, but... Uh, there's definitely a style out there of, of kind of wider legged jeans, which I get are very fashionable and very cute. Um, however, I would be very cautious because even when I had my bootleg jeans, 
a calf can step with their sharp toe on the back of that and rip your pants. So please be careful. I think definitely in showmanship, I would try to make sure that you're practicing safe practices. And to me, um, if I'm sorting showmanship, I, I want the classic look of the, the jean that's not going to be um, a tripping hazard because I would hate for anyone to get hurt. Belt, you definitely want to wear one. Whatever one you want to wear is fine. I would recommend um, tucking in your shirt if it's the kind of shirt that you tuck in. Um, boots, so this is another kind of fashion trend I'm seeing. I know dude shoes are popular, they're comfortable. There's also, you know, Ariat slip-ons. There's all kinds of slip-on shoes, which are great and definitely more comfortable as you're, um, you know, preparing for a show. But in the show arena, I would again caution you to have something with a, a firm surface as well as a firm top because if you get your foot stepped on, I got my toe stepped on last year at the state fair and I'm pretty sure it definitely was bruised for about three months. Um, and again, I was wearing comfortable shoes because I was trotting all along the state fairground. So I would just make sure you are protected and definitely in showmanship, it's it's kind of the, the gold standard is to have a, a boot shoe. Hair, ladies, even guys, just make sure it's not in your eyes or in your face. Um, you don't wanna be worried about your hair um, getting in your way. Accessories, I know clearly a fashionista at heart as you see by the photo. I know that there's lots of pretty things um, you, can, you can get out there and, and just be careful. Um, you wanna make sure that you're able to do what you need to do and not show your animal. Um, and again, sometimes they can be a little bit distracting. A touch here and there is, is very appropriate, but just be comfortable with whatever you're wearing. And that's why I say practice in what you wear. Um, so I've seen some guys sometimes and even ladies wear cowboy hats. And if you're not used to that, that can really um, change your viewpoint. Uh, so make sure that whatever you're practicing in or whatever you're planning to wear, you, you kind of give a test run, a dress rehearsal, as we would say in the theater. Pack, pack your clothes the night before. I can't tell you how many times we would get to the show and I'd forgotten socks, boot socks, or a belt, or whatever. And sometimes you're in locations where you can get those, but sometimes you're not. So you might end up having to borrow a pair of boots from a friend. I did that once. So just make sure you don't, don't add additional stress. Pack it the night before. And then lastly, of course, as a beef showman or show woman, you need a clean scotch comb in that back pocket, um, which would be the, the comb actually appropriately goes so that it's in the right pocket so you can reach for it and then uh, comb your calf whenever the judge um, is walking away after they've handled it. Um, but back in the day when we would wear our Wrangler jeans, it would be the, that was the way I'd remember is because I'd have the little Wrangler patch, but it is definitely the right pocket. And I, I don't know if that's common um, knowledge, but it, it's definitely the standard protocol is the right side. All right. So again, showmanship and preparing for the show is a lot about routine and ritual. The day of the show, I always would get very, and even still, like when we show open show, you know, I get very um, intense is a good word for it just be calm. You, you have prepared, you have practiced. Don't work yourself up into a frenzy in, in which that's going to just go out the window. So just be calm as you can. Um, you've prepared for that moment, so you're all right. Make sure you arrive in plenty of time for the show. So um, particularly talking more or less about open shows, generally with 4-H events, you're, you know, you're told and expected to be there by time, but sometimes with our open shows, you may have more liberty, but don't, you don't want to be late. And let's say even at the state fair you're showing and you know showmanship's going to be a little bit different but for those species where you have a separate class you actually you know are rushing around to get to that class that is a terrible feeling so just try to make sure you're there early um, we were always generally the first people in the barn and the last ones to leave because that's just how we operated and i think it was because you know we were triple checking and double checking things and that's okay um as well the day of you want to make sure 
that your animal is clean and dry and ready to go. So again, it's about making sure you get there in time and you're not rushing around and then don't have time to make sure your calf is completely dry. Um, I have seen some youth who have showed up in showmanship with a wet calf and that's not, that's not ideal. Again, preparing them as you prepare yourself is, is a part of the process. Um, but also you wanna make sure that the day of, you know, you, you allow for time to, to rinse your calf off, blow them dry, give them their feed, and then get them up again and, and blow them off to take them in the show arena. It's, it's not more or less about having them stand around forever because that's not a fun feeling either. So part of that ritual should be trying to get a pace of how you think the judge is going to go. Sometimes you can predict it and sometimes you know, they may start off pretty speedy and then get to a division or a class where they're really stumped and that's okay. You just want to make sure that you are prepared and your animal is, is calm and comfortable as well. Um, you want to make sure you get dressed and ready, obviously. Try to stay clean if you can. I know that's hard. Take some time to watch the show because every judge is different, every ring is different, every surface is different. And by surface, I mean truly studying the ground because there may be holes in the ring, there may be areas to avoid, there may be corners that you could get stuck on. So what's your plan if you get pulled in line where you're on that corner? How are you gonna accomplish that? Thinking through your game plan is very important. Also, if you're not in the first class of the day, you wanna make sure you're watching, again, not only for the pattern, but the judge can also, um, sometimes they'll provide um, commentary about what they're looking for and that's to your advantage if you're not in those um, divisions and even if you are and let's say you you win the class you can still go back and learn more um, to prepare you for your next round so use that to your advantage um, you want to arrive early to the show arena if they're calling you for showmanship or you're late to your show showmanship class I I'll be realistic with you nine times out of ten you're probably going to be done because it's about being prepared and being ready and, and being there to show off your skills and a part of your task is making sure that you're there on time. Also, back in my day, I say this like I'm, I mean, I'm older than all of you, but I'm not that old, but even still, I see kids, they don't want to be the first one in the ring and that's not always a bad thing. Um, if you're the first one in the ring, you set the pace for the speed, you set the pace for being in line. And again, that's to your advantage. Where I personally don't always like to be, and sometimes it happens just by happenstance, is in the middle. Because that's when you're gonna have more people, it's gonna be harder to see where the line leader is. It's gonna be um, more challenging to work your way out of, um, you know, if your calf moves or someone moves your calf because their calf moves, you're not gonna have as much room. So if you could be on the, the front end or the, the back end, that to me is ideal. Again, sometimes you're gonna be in the middle and it's just about how you respond to that and how you prepare for that. Sorry, my computer gets laggy here. I don't know why it does this. All right, so let's break it down step by step. So again, I'm going to kind of just throw some things at you um, to help you kind of think of the full process. So the second you hit the show arena, you want to make sure you know where that judge is. Now, there's a difference between being aware of where the judge is at all times and then also only focusing on the judge and completely ignoring everything else. Don't forget about your animal. After all, that's what you're there to do. Um, pay attention to your surroundings. Someone in front of you can stop, and I've seen this a lot. You, the person's looking around or looking at their animal or whatever, and they run right into the back of that calf. That obviously can be very dangerous for many reasons. Um, but also, you want to pay attention to if someone drops a comb and it ends, you know, teeth in the air. That's not fun for a calf to step on. If they drop a show stick, if if the calf in front of you is acting rowdy or behind you. So being aware of what's going on, and that's something that again can take some time to kind of build a, um, build a mechanism for, 
for working towards making sure that you're you're being aware, but in the same token, you're not being, um, mm -hmm. for lack of a better word, obnoxious about it. Um, so just kind of, again, if with your camera phones, maybe have mom or dad record so you can kind of work on just getting that natural awareness of what's going on. Um, be pleasant and polite. Sometimes my mom always would have the saying of watch your face because sometimes I was, like I said, I was pretty intense. And so I would go out there and I had no idea, but I looked like I was mad or mean or whatever. And the judge would come up to me and I'd be very, very pleasant. But it's one thing to be intense, but you also want to look like, you know, you're, you're enjoying what you're doing. So no, you don't have to smile the whole time. But um, again, you don't want to look unapproachable the whole time either. We already talked a little bit about answering questions, knowing your animal, knowing the parts of your animal. What is your animal eating? What are they weighing? When's the birthday? If it's a female, even a steer, who are they? Who's their sire? That kind of thing. Those are all questions you can work on at home in preparation. Um, but whatever you do, don't make something up because that is... Um, not ideal uh, and a judge obviously is asking you that for a reason they may ask you a question that to be honest they may not have an answer for or they may not know the answer themselves um so it's okay to say i'm not sure i will i will remember this question and i will think about it and get an answer but today i don't know that answer that's fine we're all human we don't know everything that's for sure uh, another point of contact with the judge is, you know, in showmanship, a lot of times with cattle, they're going to come around and they're going to touch your animal. Um, and you don't want to pull your comb out right away when they're trying to have a conversation with you. But as they're walking away, they're going to look and see if you're, you're doing that. And you definitely want to do that. A lot of times that's one of those things that can push someone over the edge in showmanship or hold them back. All right. So one of the biggest challenges I see with young show show people, and even I've even seen it with people who are older showing in open shows, is that halter. The halter can really make or break your performance. So a good rule of thumb is to make sure your strap is at least the length of your from your um, hand to your shoulder. Um, shoulder width is a little short um, depending on your size, but definitely from that hand to your shoulder. You don't want it to be tripping you. I can't tell you how many times growing up, my dad would pull a pocket knife out and cut the strap end off and then it would never be again the right size. So don't wait till that last minute to get to the show arena and realize this isn't gonna work. Um, the other thing you don't wanna do is you don't wanna wrap your hand around the strap. Um, this is where I'm gonna also tell you, if your animal is acting up, and you feel that you could be hurt, you let go of that animal right away. There's no prize in getting hurt or drug around. And at the end of the day, your pride may be hurt a little bit, but that's a lot better than having a concussion or a broken bone or causing more of an issue. So if you feel that you're in danger, you need to let go. There's nothing wrong with that. I've never been a proponent of hold on and get drug around the arena. That's gonna do more damage for lots of reasons than just saying, okay, we're going to let the calf go. It's going to calm down. We're going to catch it and we're going to try it again. That's fine. Again, your pride isn't as important as your health. Trust me. Uh, so yeah, don't wrap the chain. Um, when you're leading your animal, I know this is another topic where we, pr we probably have more of what I would consider the traditional old school way versus what we're seeing now. But I can tell you as a former dairy showman myself, the overhanded way is the way to have the most control with that beef animal versus this underhanded um, method when you're leading the animal forward that I'm seeing. I was taught this is the difference between beef and dairy. And I can tell you it just, this to me leading forward is incredibly awkward. So I think, especially for little kids this way, you have the most control, you make your fist, you've got your calf, you're leading it forward. Um, when also when you're leading your hand should be right there by the face so there's kind of a, a visual of what that looks like um, when you're young you 
I know they think that maybe as you're setting them up, you can have more control to push forward um, with when you're underhanded, but when you're leading, actually it's a lot easier to push forward and up over up overhanded. Um, I get my hands confused. So when you're leading, overhanded, and then when you're stopped to set up, you're gonna switch that hand to underhanded again. So you have most control. That's what it's all about is having that control. And again, I'm telling you more of the traditional way, but I'm also telling you why I feel that it's safer. Um, so, you know, you may, you may do the underhand thing, but to me, that's, there's a distinct difference because I grew up knowing there was this distinct difference and I can feel the difference and have felt the difference in control. So um, remember leading over and then when you're setting up, it's underhanded because you can push up on that head and you can pull forward easier than under when you're moving around. All right. All right, so setting your animal up. Um, you're gonna watch your lines and we'll show some images, but when you pull in the arena, again, it's gonna depend on, on the show. So you're gonna wanna get this set up, but most of the time you're just gonna pull right in, um, nose to the rail, and then the next person's gonna be right beside you, kind of in a line there. Um, you want to keep your spacing. We've learned all about social distancing this year, uh, but with cattle, we always want to maintain that four to six feet uh, distance between each of them. Again, it's about being able to move out of line if you need to um, versus not being, you know, being stuck where you're so crammed in there you can't maneuver if you need to. When you're setting your animal up in showmanship and even the show, the judge is looking at you. They're waiting for you to respond. You wanna be quick, but you also wanna be calm as you do that. Um, switching the hands around for younger exhibitors is often really hard. So we're leading, we've got our halter in this hand, our showmanship, in, or excuse me, our show stick in our, our left hand. Um, then we're gonna stop and we're gonna switch everything around and we're gonna transition our hands to where this is again underhanded and then we're going to have that show stick in the uh, the right hand um, so you want to make sure that you're um, you know switching smoothly and quickly practice 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 that's not something that's just comes natural because it's a lot of stuff in your hands and moving around um, so practice the switching from the lead strap to the you know you're switching hands this way and then you've got that show stick. Um, sometimes when we're younger, we may be leading with two hands. As you get older, try your best to lead with one hand, not holding, not holding the lead rope and the halter in your hand if you don't, the lead strap and the show stick in your hand if you don't have to. Um, anytime you are taking that show stick and you are trying to um, get your calf ready to set up, you wanna make sure you let them know that you're there. So take the stick, um, one, one trick I was always taught was to kind of, as you are preparing to scratch the belly or even the, um, the chest of the animal, you wanna make sure you kind of take the, the, the surface of that stick, not the, not the tip, the sharp part, but you wanna kind of let them know that you're there before you just start scratching. Again, you gotta practice that at home to let them know how to respond to that show stick but it does help if you kind of just let them know that you're there before you start poking around at their feet. Um, we'll talk, we'll show this more in the video, uh, but there's, you know, the part of the finesse, part of putting it all together is being able to move around so the judge can see the animal. And again, that's something you got to practice at home. So if they're, you know, if that judge is standing out and your set profile like this picture here in the corner, you would be out from that animal. And if they're directly in front of you, you're gonna move around so that you're not standing directly in their way so that they can see the front feet of that animal. Um, and then if, you know, depending on how they're, where they're at, you just wanna make sure that you're out of their way. But also you have to, of course, maintain control of your animal. So here are just a couple of different angles. Um, again, wish my video was working, had some great video, but nine times out of 10, you're just gonna pull forward like you see here um, in this picture on the left. And then uh, you're gonna walk around, you're gonna make like an S curve. And you probably, most of the time in, in rings the size of county fairs and even, you know, even at state fair, 
a lot of times you may walk two laps versus one. Sometimes you may just lap once if it's a small class, but in larger um, classes with larger numbers, you're gonna definitely walk twice. So um, when you end, you're gonna end up uh, head to tail again. And this is the important part in which if uh, the young lady here with this red calf were to get pulled out, obviously the judge is picking a winner here, but um, if, if this young lady were to get pulled out, then the young lady behind her would immediately pull up. Again, another area in which we'll emphasize later, but that's an important step that just like combing, just the pulling up part can make or break um, showmanship. And, you know, as, a, as someone that judges, I know that I definitely have moved some people around in my mind because they've forgotten to pull up. You're so in the moment you forget that that's one of the most important parts of showing because you're, you're closing in the gaps. Um, and then you're also refreshing and resetting your animal. So um, maybe you're not in the best setup. So you get another chance to kind of fix that. All right. So again, we have two tools and one of them is your halter and one of them is your show stick. And um, the show stick's designed to help you position the feet, which we'll talk more about, but it's also there to help you keep animals calm and help you keep control. As you can see, um, this young lady might be having some issues with her calf, wanting to walk ahead of her. So she's kind of got it propped out. She's using it to her advantage. The other thing, I'm gonna skip around here, but while we're on the topic and looking at this, the um, picture here, she has that pointer turned in, not turned out. And that's very important from a safety aspect, as well as making sure that you're carrying it. Showmanship's, showmanship, or excuse me, show sticks have a handle. Um, and I've seen times where people have had it flipped upside down to where the pointer's in the air. That's very dangerous. So make sure you're properly, um, you've got that point facing towards the animal and also making sure that you've got the, the handle side um, out towards the audience, if you will. It can also help you keep a, a level top. Again, that's one of the last steps you'll do is, is make sure once you've got the feet set, set that your top is nice and level. Um, a lot of times animals don't have any issues with that, but you may have an animal that, you know, pops their loin a little different and you just take the end of that stick and level it down as you need to. Another kind of um, issue that you see a lot of times and um, youth showmen don't realize that they're doing this and it doesn't matter the age, but you don't want to saw your animal in half. So the goal is to use that stick as a calming device, but you don't want to show how anxious or um, excited you are by sawing that animal in half. So use it in a calm manner and one of the best pieces of advice because I went for a long time and never had any issues with that, but as I got older and the more intense I got, I sometimes would catch myself like going way too fast and, and doing that. Um, and one of my friends said, he said, you know, hum a song in your head. So I developed just this one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, to help keep me focused. Um, some people I know, like they have a favorite song that's slow and so they'll just do that. I mean, it, if, if that's an issue you have, again, if you see a video or your mom or dad or whoever helps you tells you that, then try the song because it worked for me. And again, it wasn't something I always did, but the more, the more that was on the line, the more nervous I got. And so sometimes I would have to, um, to uh, check myself on that. Um, and we already talked about that. So now we're going to talk a little bit about foot placement. And I, um, I borrowed this resource from uh, and a fellow extension service here. So I gave them credit there at the top. But again, when my videos weren't working, I was like, well, this is, this is perfect. This will work great. Um, so when I show, I like to, you know, it's, it's all about preference, but I think um, really trying to focus on setting those front feet should be your first goal. Um, so as you're pulling in, I always recommend, um, of course, using your own foot as a break. Um, in front of them, so you're going to stop. Again, this is a trick you have to practice at home. Really, the more you practice, the less of this, the show stick that you should have to use, and that's what's kind of great and fabulous about it. Um, but you also want to know, again, what are the best angles of your animal? 
Um, so this is where I might say these resources are a little older. So some of our style has changed a little bit, um, but I also don't know what this particular animal looks like in terms of how sound they are, et cetera. Um, but this is a, a good uh, diagram just to show you. So the first picture you see that the animal, um, the feet are too close. And when that's too close, it really makes that, um, really makes that heifer look pretty narrow from the ground up. Um, and then in the middle there, you see we call it just right. I feel like it's like Goldilocks and the three bears and the porridges, but you see that it's just right. Um, it's also in line, as you can see, um, it's not the best angle, but it's also in line with that back foot as well. And then lastly, what you commonly see the most of, to be honest, is those front feet too sprawled out. So this example, you can really see those toes starting to, to tune out and that just appears unnatural as well as unbalanced. And that's gonna make them potentially think that heifer has some shoulder issues. Um, obviously that's gonna impact her performance and her structural correctness. So, <clears throat> all right. And then once you get your front feet set, you're gonna, uh, depending on if you have a steer or heifer, um, the styles changed a little bit in that you're, you're seeing more steers kind of with that scissored look or slightly scissored look versus, um, you know, back and back when I started showing you would you would square them up. They're a market animal, you're going to square them up because that makes them look wider, um, wide over the top, wide as they come down. But now you'll kind of see some differentials in that. But the biggest thing is, again, you don't want those back legs too close because that'll make them up here that they're narrow and that they're, um, they, it just dis distracts from their natural muscling. Um, and again, like it's all about being structurally correct or being able to move around and being sound from the ground up. So if, the, if they're too uh, close together, then they might rub, um, basically rub their hocks together and that's not ideal. Uh, just right is just that natural balance. It, they don't look too extreme from behind, but they look nice and natural as you come down. <clears throat> and then lastly, too wide. So this animal itself is, is fairly green or fairly young, so it's not really very wide at all, uh, but definitely spreading those back feet in an unnatural way does not do it any justice. <clears throat> all right, so as we're setting the back feet, a couple of things I want to hint on are that um, as you are trying to move, usually you're trying to move a back foot forward. And as you're doing that, use that halter to your advantage and pull slightly, pull that nose forward. Pull it forward as you're pulling your show stick. That is something you've got to practice at home because it doesn't come easy. Um, I can... I can about remember the exact show ring I was in when I really made it work. I tried for a long time to make it look natural, um, but I was, I was pretty small. And so uh, that's something I had to work on at home and get, you know, sometimes just holding that head up was enough of a feat, but then to, to add another twist to it took me some time and that's okay. Um, to move the back foot for, to move the foot back, you're gonna do the opposite. You're gonna push on that head. Um, don't jab, again, Sometimes when we're younger, especially if you have a brand new show stick, those feet can be super sensitive. Also, please make sure you make your um, hoof trimming, feet trimming appointments ahead of the fair and give yourself some time for those to kind of heal because they are fairly tender and you definitely don't want to take a show stick and start jabbing right away. Uh, but again, using that head to your advantage. One thing that I did as, as a younger 4-H member, again, as I was trying to build up my strength, would, I would sometimes try to set that back foot and I was short, so as I would go back there, I'd pull that head towards me. And that was one of those things that I never knew I was doing it, <clears throat> excuse me, but I finally saw a picture that my grandma took and my mom said, this is exactly what I'm talking about. And so then I visually put it into process and Never did it again, but that's one of those things. So don't pull that head towards you as you're trying to set those back feet. Um, and again, uh, knowing your animal and what they look like from that side view is very important. Here we see one that's too bunched up. Um, we have what they say is just right. I feel like actually the front feet are a little stretched, but also I think 
if the showman would take the head and just um, lift it up a little bit, it would probably not make it look like they're running downhill. And I, I also wonder if that is a level surface. Again, knowing your show arena and knowing if you're running downhill is important too. And then lastly, you see stretched out. Um, I feel like the younger you are, the more you see this. And again, I think it's just everything is so much bigger when you're smaller and you don't always realize that you're doing that. But um, we always had a term in my household that you're stretched out like a hack me pony. Because of course you stretch out more than cattle. So practice at home. Um, this is where I will also say that in showmanship, don't be looking to the sidelines for a coach. Um, judges do pay attention to that and you're out there to do your performance. So however you land and however you do is, is to the best of your ability. And that's truly what it's all about. And there have been times where I've seen a really nice, you know, a showman doing a good job, but they never once made eye contact with me because they were looking outside the ring. You're there to perform to the best of your ability and know that you're doing that. So again, practice at home so you're prepared but um, don't be looking for sideline coaching during the event. All right, so like I said, a little ch techno technological challenges today. So I decided that I was gonna make a map, which looks real confusing. But what I'm gonna try to do is take my mouse. So I basically was trying to um, create a show arena here. So the first step, you're gonna follow me with this mouse here. We're going to pull in here. So this is the entrance to our show arena. We're going to pull in here and then we're going to pull our calves where their nose would be to this rail. So this is the rail. This is the calf's nose. There's your four to four to six foot spacing in between. Um, nose to calf's rail. The calves are not all the way pulled to the rail at this time. So this first person is the line leader. So you, you as the second showman would want to make sure that your nose is directly in line with this one and the same with the third. If this, if this calf in the middle is like all the way up here, even this third, this third calf here would still want to be in line with that first, first calf there. So then when you're done, you pull up here and we're going to create this S curve. So this individual is going to pull off. They're going to take their calf as using as much of the arena as possible. So pulling fairly closely to the rear end of those other calves. And then they're gonna take another wide angle here. And again, they may do a couple laps, but for the purpose of this, it's just a class of three. So we're just gonna take them here and then we're gonna line them up head to tail. So, whoops, what did I do? There we go. So we line them up head to tail here. So here's the showman, here's the calf, here's the showman, here's the calf. So then at the conclusion of the class, the judge is gonna start pulling them out. So let's say they pull this, this calf here in second, he pull, they pull right back here. Um, and then this calf in third, right here in this third hole at the moment, would then pull forward and then they'd kind of filtrate in and so on. But I'm just showing you this because this is what I, um, I say that step one is you end up here and also step three is that you end up here. And step two is that you set up here. So you've got, You've got three different times to make sure that your calf is set up, sometimes four, because sometimes they may make you rewalk them, et cetera. But in this example, um, that's where we're at. So I'm going to, I have to stop sharing my screen for a moment and then make sure my video is ready. And I'd like to give a shout out to this time, my neighbors, Abel Akers and former 4-H members when I was a county educator, worked really hard, like I said, to put some really quality videos together. Um, so I will get these posted because they are excellent. They did a very nice job. Um, can you all see that, Kara? Yes. Okay. All right. So this is the whole process. So we've talked a lot but this is putting it all together. So we're entering the show arena, um, just as we said, Drew and Ray are pulling their calves forward. We're gonna see the judge here in a moment. They've definitely got their eye on the judge. They've walked their cattle and their heifers into the front foot placement. 
Ray must have had the, the blue, the guy in the blue shirt must have had his back feet set up, but he did take the stick and loin it. Um, Ray has already kind of stepped over to the side there to show the judge that front end. Um, Drew, she just touched his calf. He combed it appropriately. Um, he got out of the way of her angle from seeing it there. The judge is handling it. He went a little sooner than I probably would, but that's all right. Um, she definitely saw it, and I think if uh, in a class of two, that would probably be appropriate, but notice how Ray is moving around as well as Drew. He's noticed something. All right, we're going to pull him up again to that rail. Drew is the first person, so he's going to peel off, and if there were more calves, again, that's where you would want to make sure that you're pulling in tight, and he's going to, and really using that ring. Uh, one thing you don't want to not do is use the ring because if the, the less space the calf has, the more dizzy they get and the more confused they get. So then we're going to pull them in over here. Again, a small class of two. You're probably only going to walk basically what I would consider a half, half of a, a, a circle. But then we're going to line them up, stopping with the front feet there. Again, both young men are using their feet as, as that break. Um, there. So one thing to note here is that you would, you know, again, you only have so many seconds to get that calf set up. Um, and so Ray's taking a little longer and that's okay. Um, but in, in the show, you might, in the showmanship, if they're giving you 10 seconds, then you better have it set up um, in that amount of time. So then Ray is pulling up there just as he should. He's got him set. He's going to loin the calf appropriately. Really nice use from both young men of the show, show stick. One thing Drew in the white right there is doing, I kind of forgot to mention, but get those ears forward. Don't be obnoxious about it, um, but let the calf know that you're there and that, um, that you want to get their attention. So um, there's lots of ways to do that, but you don't want to be super distracting. Um, I've heard some whistling and sometimes um, it's not only distracting to the judge, but it can actually be really, um, sometimes the, the cattle, the other cattle don't respond well to it. So just, just keep that in mind. Know what you're going to do, but make sure it's something. I would always just be, I honestly use the word hey. And I said it just pretty lightly. I would just say, hey, hey. But that was something I practiced at home and my calf would respond to it. I've seen people, you know, of course, blow on the nose. Whatever you're doing, you just don't want to be obnoxious about it. Um, lastly, just know this is my cousin Emma and she does a really good job. But I use this photo because this steer would give her a really hard time. Um, she's tall and she could handle him, but he just was not always cooperative. And as you can see from her shirt, he, he was just wallering her, for lack of a better term, all around the show arena. Um, so I just want you to remember, and she did win the class, I guess. She has a blue ribbon. Not that that's what's important, but um, definitely this wasn't her showmanship animal. Let's just say that. Things are not always going to go your way. So it's not... A lot of times in showmanship, I, I use this in a lot of my conversations with um, audiences when I'm judging, but it's about your reaction. It's about how you're responding um, more so than anything. So be calm, be positive. Um, don't make faces when you think the judge isn't looking because they probably are. Don't um, mouth things under your breath that you probably shouldn't say. Um, just be a good example because a lot of times, especially for you older kids, you are you are the role model for those young people that are sitting there watching you and they want to be just like you. So make sure every step you do, you're towing the line and being a positive example. I think that's a very important part of showmanship and just sportsmanship in general because, you know, for a lot of us, this is kind of a sport. I wasn't real athletic, but I, I showed cattle and showed animals. So that was my, my uh, sport, if you will. Be safe. Again, don't put your life on the line. Don't put yourself on the line. If something is, is unsafe, then let go. Um, or if you're backed into a corner and your calf just starts acting up and you need to escape, then that's what you do. And that's okay. 
Um, your safety is way more important than any showmanship award any day of the week. Learn from and through everything. So again, sometimes I remember the last time I showed at the Hoosier Beef Congress, I didn't get picked and I was kind of disappointed because I had worked really, really hard and um, I felt like I kind of just got lost in it. Um, so I don't know, you know, I don't know what happened, but I definitely, that wasn't, fortunately that wasn't the last time I showed. So I have had, you know, I had lots of experience after that, but I did learn from it. And that was just that um, sometimes no matter how hard you try, things aren't going to work in your favor. And that's, that's just a part of life. So never lessen yourself because of that. Um, because again, that's not showmanship or showing that animal isn't your defining glory of the project. It's truly the experience and all of the things you put into practice that, that are going to make you, um, you know, who you are. So don't, don't worry about it. Things aren't always going to work out of it, but you can learn. And that's why I say, you know, everything from foot placement to things like that. If someone's trying to help you absorb it, think about it, how are you going to correct it and move forward? And that's all you can do. And then lastly, I think I would, I have to say this, but, um, you know, we're never, we're never a thousand percent. There are days where we're like on and we, you know, we might win a showmanship division in a, in a, a, a stitch, but you always have to practice the 4-H motto of making the best better. So just keep that in mind. There's always things to learn. There's always people to help. There's always people to teach. And that's truly what um, our mission is through this project. And then lastly, my favorite part of all of this has just been getting to know um, my you know, my friends, um, like I said, my husband was my competitor growing up, which is, can be really interesting sometimes, but uh, we have fun and some of our best friends and some of our best memories involved uh, showing animals. So have fun while you're doing it. And I love this photo because I think it truly captures what it's all about. So um, lastly, I do have a survey. Um, if Kara can share that in the survey box there and I also would like to just acknowledge the following sources real quick and then I'll go back to the survey. Um, if there are any questions feel free to type those in the chat box or Kara if you see any let me know. I wish you all luck um, in, in your future showmanship and again this is something you can you can practice to start today or you can uh, move forward with in the future. Brittany, can you reshare that link? It won't let me copy it. In the... Okay I think I did it. Okay yep there it is. All right so if you'll take a moment and uh, some of your educators are are asking that you complete the the, the survey just to let them know what what educational opportunities that uh, you're taking part in. That would be fantastic. Otherwise, thank you for joining us today. I don't see any questions, but I'm happy to answer them if um, you do have them.